Hello, everyone, and welcome to Nonprofit Financial Statements, um, What Every Executive Director Must Know. For today's lessons plan, we're going to go over um, introduction, financial reporting overview. We're going to discuss four financial reports every executive director must know, talk about presenting to your board and funders, and have a wrap-up. Along the way, um, if you want to submit any questions, um, we'll pause and answer questions as we go along. Please use the GoToWebinar question tool um, that you see in your dashboard. Submit any questions. We have the queue visible to us, and we'll, we'll pause and answer any questions you have um, throughout the webinar just to make it more interactive. So the instructors today are myself. My name is Ron Kwok. I'm the Director of Strategy and Marketing for Jatasa. And we also have Jeff Russell, who is the CEO founder of Jatasa. Hey, everybody. And as far as who Jatasa is, you know, we are the first and largest national accounting services provider. And we exclusively serve the nonprofit sector. We currently have about 200 nonprofit clients from federations and startups in every sector, from arts and humanities, education, youth development, association. And what that's given us is you know, a really good overview of, of pretty much all the different finance and accounting challenges, best practices for organizations at different stages, but also with different industry or focuses across the sector. And what we've done through this webinar series is really bring that knowledge together as a way to educate our clients and our partners um, going forward. And that's really what we try to do is, in addition to you know, taking on the finance and accounting work, really partner with our clients to help educate them with the basic finance and accounting knowledge that they need to make the right decisions and to really build a partnership between us and, and our clients. So before we really dive into understanding the financial statements and, and how to make sense of them, I wanted to tee up you know, why this is important. And there's a great book out there called Nonprofit Sustainability, and it's by Gene Bell and Jan Masaka and Steve Zimmerman. And they have put together a book that basically looks at you know, how your programs operate cannot be separated from the financial decisions that you make. And so all of us in the nonprofit sector, we're generally in this because of our programs and those we want to help. But the, the financial reality hits all of us at some point. And this is a great book that sort of combines those two. So I really, really highly recommend it. Um, Jean Bell summarizes it. She says, for nonprofits, financial sustainability and program sustainability cannot be separated. So you can't talk one without the other. And so as we go through this today, talking about financial statements, really making sense of it and understanding it, the reason we're doing this is really comes back to programs and program sustainability. The path to financial understanding, there's really um, two levels of reporting that you should be concerned about. Um, one is the internal reporting that the executive director or the staff that you go through. Um, we recommend that at a minimum, regardless of the size of your organization, you should be looking at that on a monthly basis. Um, even if you're a $100,000 organization, it's, it's sort of, uh, or even 50000 these are things that you should really look at on a monthly basis. Um, the executive director, the person who's in charge, typically is, you know, is a very program-minded person. Um, we really emphasize that you don't have to know how to create the finances, but you should certainly understand the finances and be able to insert them. Uh, board reporting, some nonprofits meet on a, a monthly basis, and so they present to their board on a monthly basis. Um, we also feel that at a minimum, you should present to your board on a quarterly basis. And you don't want to present to the board everything that the executive director looks at, right? It should be higher level reporting, um, trend, trends analysis over time. But you want to avoid getting in with the board and talking about, you know, what the budget was for the, the photocopier. And I've sat through board meetings where they do exactly that. So part of it is you have to limit what you give them. But we'll talk about more of that uh, at the end as well. So our approach to financial understanding, um, and whether you know you're with Jutasa or not with Jutasa, we think that this is a the right approach towards financial understanding. So one is build, run, 
analyze. So our philosophy is if you build things correctly, if you have your accounting system configured correctly, if you have the processes and procedures in place, and then as long as you run it consistently, the reporting and everything should sort of fall out of, of what you do. So if you invest that upfront time and energy and cost in building it and running it, um, it will help you achieve your mission because the, the reporting and everything should sort of fall out. Um, if you're wrestling with reports, if you're changing a lot of data in Excel, if you're manipulating the reports to get what the insights that you need, there's something fundamentally wrong upstream. It's either not being run properly or it was not built properly up front. So the key to this, the key to have accurate financial statements is accurate and reliable data. Um, you know, the saying, garbage in, garbage out. So if you put garbage into the accounting system, you're going to get garbage out of the accounting system. Um, if, you're, if you put the information into QuickBooks late, then the reports you get are not going to be as timely. And timely is just as important as accurately. Um, so we'll talk, we'll talk more about this. And we had a few questions around whether the, the PowerPoint slides are going to be available after the webinar. I'm assuming those people may want to take notes. Um, so we will have the content posted to the Chautauqua University, and we'll have a link to that um, at the end of the webinar. Um, but there you'll find the PDF along with the recording of the various chapters from the webinar um, for you to review and look at. And then for everyone on this list or that signed up for the webinar, I'll send you a follow-up email with access to all that information. So the, the prerequisites, and kind of going back to this garbage in, garbage out uh, philosophy, how you actually enter the transactions into your accounting system, be it QuickBooks or whatever, um, we're going to talk a little bit about how you do that actual data entry, the actual transactions, because this is one of the key things. This is the, the fundamental building block of your report is each and every transaction that you put in. Um, so you really got to actually accurately capture it. You've got to capture all the necessary layers, all the different attributes that go into every single transaction. And then when you do that, when you look at your financials, you can look, you can slice and dice it a bunch of different ways. So let me go into what I mean there. So you have a basic transaction, right? You go out and you buy something. So that's an expense. You have the time that it happened. It happened in March. You have the amount. It was three hundred and thirty dollars. Um, you have the vendor. You did it at Staples, right? And then the expense code is you say, okay, that was office supplies. So those are the the basic transaction details that's going to be required by any accounting system. One of the things with nonprofit accounting is there's another whole layer of complexity beyond just this basic transaction detail. That's what makes nonprofit accounting so um, so unique and so difficult. So these additional layers, right? You want you don't want to know just what happened to Staples. You want to know was that a fundraising expense? Was that a program expense? If it was a program expense, which program was it for? Was it for the after school program or was it for the Saturday morning program? And then you also have to report back to your funders, typically, if you get a grant, okay, we use some of your money go buy these supplies at Staples for the Saturday morning program. There's a lot of different attributes that you have to track. So on every transaction, you have to also tell it, okay, which program was this, which grant was this. And the same is true for revenue or expenses. So when you do that, and here's just here's some different examples on how you can slice and dice the, the data. So you want to know everything I've spent on office supplies and then you can break that down by program, right? So you can go expense first and then run it by program. You may want to look at just for the year, right? So how much, how many grants, uh, how much revenue have I gotten in this particular year? And it, you do that by grant or by donor. Perhaps you need to give a report to just your funder and say, you gave me $10,000, here's exactly how I spent it. So you can see the we're already just in these three scenarios it's the same underlying data um, that we're, we're manipulating and looking at, um, slicing and dicing different views. And then lastly, you could get in and say, hey, I want to know what my Saturday morning 
program cost. I want to look at it year over year. I want to slice it by grants, by donors, by expenses. So you can really, um, sort of like a Rubik's Cube, you can look at it from any different angle that you want to look at it. And so this is the fundamental um, building block that every executive director needs to understand is that every transaction needs to have all of these attributes tagged to it. And then the reporting and everything will fall out because you've done this on a day-to-day -day basis. 